Hi everyone, I am your host Nandika Tripathi and welcome back to Leadership Mantras with Forbes India. In this episode, we are joined by Abhishek Lodha, Managing Director and CEO of real estate major Lodha Group. Abhishek has been associated with the group since 2003. Before this, he worked in management consulting with McKinsey & Company in the US. Under his leadership, Lodha Group has become India's largest real estate developer and was listed on the stock exchange in April 2021 with the IPO being oversubscribed 1.36 times. His hobbies and interests include architecture, travel, politics, cricket and tennis. Let's hear more from him. Welcome to the show, Abhishek. It's really great to have you here. I would like to go a little back to when you joined the company and uh, you started uh, your journey with Loda in 2003 after returning from the US after you completed your bachelor's and master's. Post that, you were given two years from your father to do whatever you want and uh, you chose to work with McKinsey. And you already knew what's going to be in store next and uh, were you prepared to join your family business? Yeah, those six years I spent in the U.S. were really uh, amazing for me because, you know, I grew from a, uh, from a young teenager into an adult. Uh, uh, really enjoyed my time at uh, school at Georgia Tech where I did my bachelor's and master's. I was very fortunate. It's a tough engineering school, but I was very fortunate. I did very well. Um, I had a perfect uh, GPA or grade point average 4.0 all through, and that allowed me to do my bachelor's and master's both in four years, which typically takes six years, which actually then allowed me to have two extra years. Otherwise, I may not have had those two years to work. And I really was lucky that McKinsey recruited me from campus. I was the only person recruited for the business analyst program from the Georgia Tech campus and uh, really enjoyed working there. It really helped me understand how the business world works. I worked with some of the top multinational companies in the world as a young 20 one 22 year old it was a fantastic opportunity working with ceos cfos understanding how businesses think and it really really helped shape i think it's had a really fundamental uh, shaping effect on me and yeah i think uh, you know uh, it was heart wrenching to leave mckinsey uh, i you know had really started enjoying it a lot and uh, as much as i knew that i wanted to come back and be with the family and join the family business which at that time was uh, a modest size business. It was really, you know, tough. Uh, it was tough leaving the US, so many friends, so much uh, to do there and uh, leaving McKinsey. But yeah, I, I'm Did glad I came back. Did you a shock when you came back to India, like a little? <laughs> No, it wasn't a culture shock. I was very regularly in touch with India. In my six years in the US, I would come back you know, two or three or even four times a year. So it was, there wasn't any cultural shock. I've always been close to my parents. Um, uh, so I would even in the US speak to them every day. So there wasn't a culture shock. But yeah, when you come back two years in McKinsey, you know, working for Coke and working for IBM as a consultant, and then you come back and okay. you're working in a small size, medium size real estate company, the world is very different. Uh, but uh, but yeah, it was it was fantastic uh, training ground for me. I was I, I couldn't have been lucky. I'm, I, I feel blessed that I had that opportunity. That's lovely. And you know, your grandfather was a freedom fighter and chief justice in high court and your father was a lawyer and then he turned into a real estate tycoon. Tell us about some traits or learnings that you picked up from their leadership style. I've been, you know, once again, very fortunate. Uh, my grandfather, uh, he, his father passed away early. Uh, he, they, in those times, didn't have light at home, so he would study under the street light. And from that humble beginning, he went on to, you know, uh, become a well-known lawyer in Rajasthan, then was uh, leader of the opposition in the Rajasthan Assembly, then became a judge, then became chief justice. After retiring as chief justice, he became member of parliament for three terms. So it was a fantastic, you know, as a young child to see someone who has so much energy, so much enthusiasm, was good at whatever he did. So I think, I think you know, uh, he really inspired me and he is an icon for me. And similarly, my dad, you know, he trained as a lawyer. When my grandfather became a judge, he didn't want to practice in the same high court because that's a conflict of interest. So he left that, came to Bombay with a few thousand rupees in his pocket, two young children, uh, did uh, various uh, jobs. I think his first salary was 2,000 rupees a month. And, you know, uh, with his own drive and will, he would leave home at 6 a.m. every day, come back at 10 p.m., 
uh, he he started this business and you know uh, grew it and then uh, sometime in the mid 90s he decided he wanted to uh, you know uh, do the same thing my grandfather was doing which was public service and therefore uh, handed over the business to professional hands and uh, was elected as member of the legislative assembly MLA from Malabar Hill which is the most uh, prestigious constituency in Maharashtra so again you know I've seen someone who does he's great at whatever he does um, and you know uh, works very very hard uh, he is my uh, inspiration he is my hero so a lot I'm very lucky to have had both of my grandfather and my grandfather and my father uh, to nurture me guide me uh, and uh, I've really uh, learned a lot from them so Vishik some people call you a micromanager and some call you a value adder you are someone who gets involved with employees and believe in being hands-on so what is your leadership style like I'd say my uh, leadership style is uh, driven by having great and very capable people around me. That's what sort of came to me from McKinsey because people around me at McKinsey were very, very capable, often more capable than me and I really enjoyed that. So, so I really enjoy the fact that we built a great management team and we are really able to attract great people to work for Loda, which is also uh, a joy when you're doing day-to-day -day work because you know people around you are very capable, very thoughtful and so on. So from that comes my leadership style, which is trust first. I really like having great people around and empowering them and allowing them to you know do what they think is best for the business. Uh, as I mentioned in a different context, there are certain things which I am very passionate about or I believe I have a, uh, a gift or a skill and in those areas I am very deeply involved and the other areas are, you know I believe our organization is very very powerful and is capable of taking big big decisions without me being involved. Okay. Right. So, and also, you know, you've been into the business from like almost two decades now. So, I'm sure there must have been moments where you felt like, you know, I mean, this is not working out or things are not going your way. So, you know, how did you tackle those situations? I mean, uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's a it's a great question, and yeah, the the business has had uh, you know uh, a roller coaster, especially between fifteen and 20, 2015 and two thousand twenty. But somehow, you know, um, uh, I'm blessed with having uh, a great sense of. Uh, purpose and a great sense of again like I said if the intent and the effort is right then the outcomes will follow. So I've never really felt that you know things aren't going my way. I've always sort of said okay what else can I do and that's really my approach to life. How would you define a leader's legacy? I'm I'm only in my early 40s. It's too early for me to answer that question. <laughs> or, or what legacy do you hope to leave behind? I think the legacy that we truly uh, hope to leave behind at Loda is to change how India thinks about itself. I think the built environments that we create really change the aspirations of people. Uh, when people move into what we build, whether offices or homes or retail, they really start thinking they are living or in an environment which is truly world class. They start aspiring for things which are you know, truly at the top uh, of the of the heap and I think that's the legacy we want to leave that is to leave to have many millions of Indian families who believe that there is nothing that can stop them that they deserve the best and they can get the best. So Abhishek you know uh, what is the hardest decision that you had to take in your career till now? Uh, that's a tough question. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the, I think the toughest decision that I made, which is both a business and a personal tough decision, uh, was um, in 2015 when uh, my brother and I decided that it's best for us to run our businesses separately rather than together. So that was, you know, uh, uh, a tough time uh, to reorganize the business. It also personally tough for me. But I think uh, in hindsight, it was uh, probably yes, the toughest decision, but probably one of the better or the best decisions that was taken. Okay. And last year, Loda Group uh, finally went public after so many years and quite successfully. Uh, but it was a long journey to going for IPO. Uh, what were the lessons you learned on the way? Yeah, I think uh, the uh, biggest lesson is that uh, Lady Luck has to smile on you. Uh, timing is everything, uh, as they say. So yeah, uh, Loda has did try to go public in 2010, 11, and again in 2018. But various timing factors, market factors were not with us. This time around, uh, you know, between the first wave of COVID and the second wave of COVID, we got lucky. We had that window, and uh, and uh, you know, we we got the backing of some of the world's finest investors, which we are very thankful uh, for. 
and um, uh, so I think I think the lessons are that these things will happen when they have to happen. Right. Uh, you have to focus on doing your business and uh, you know setting it uh, it to scale up and have the right kind of governance and uh, uh, the rest you know things like uh, listing are not in your control. Let's go with the flow. Yes. So talking a little about a little about business, not more, but when a recession is imminent, investors typically move away from equities towards assets like gold and real estate. So does that all go well for you? I think India is placed very well for the next 10, 15 years. I think there are many other factors which we may not get into detail in today. But while the West might have a recession and most people expect it to be a modest recession, uh, it's a planned recession. So yes, there will be some impact on India, but I don't think businesses change because of what happens over six months. Uh, you know, I think people have to recognize the fact that reacting to everyday news flow is a fool's game. Nobody can win that game. What one really has to look at is, you know, what is the long term, medium term outlook both for the country as well as for the industry and the company. Uh, so, um, uh, so I think those three factors, country, industry and company uh, for uh, our, I would say India is very, very strongly placed when it comes as a country. There are many factors. India is going to move from being a 3 trillion economy to you know, 10 trillion first and then 25 trillion and then 50 trillion over the next 25 years. So it's huge growth uh, that's, that India has got. That's the power of compounding. It's, you know, it's, uh, even with a 50 trillion economy, India's per capita uh, GDP is going to be, you know, only in the, you know, middle income countries. So we are not, it's a, it's a long, long way to go and India has the population, we now have the leadership, uh, we have the geopolitical tailwind. So I think India is well placed and I think within that housing as it has done in many other uh, economies is extremely well placed uh, to make a big difference uh, to India's economy. Uh, housing is uh, much smaller in India than it should be. And so I'm, I'm pretty optimistic. I don't know what's going to happen over the next six months, but I'm pretty optimistic if you ask me over three year or a 10 year view that both India as well as the housing industry are very well placed. Okay. So do you have any plans of joining politics? No, I'm very happy doing what I'm doing right now which is making a difference. I think uh, what LODA does, building, uh, you know, fantastic communities uh, makes a big difference to the country. Uh, and also what we're doing through the LODA Foundation makes a big difference uh, to the societies and the country. So both of these are really, pas uh, I'm, I'm very passionate about. Uh, so I can uh, say that these are going to be my focus for quite some time. All right. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much you. for joining us today and sharing some thought-provoking leadership mantras with us. It's great having you.